Hey, Diner Dan back with you. Uh, just looking to maybe assist a few people out there with their understanding of torque-based electronic throttle control. This is a relatively old hat uh, as it regards to automotive tech. Um, you know, 2005 Mustang kind of turned the Ford tuning community on its head a little bit with, uh, you know, electronic uh, throttle control, torque-based electronic throttle control, relative to some of the GMs at the time were more or less throttle followers until they evolved into, uh, you know, a true torque-based electronic throttle control system. But anyhow, as it pertains to Harley-Davidson's, um, I'm just going to share my screen here with you. And looks like we've already got that going on. So this is uh, just uh, an indication of what I believe, and I am not the architect, I am not the you know, uh, inside guy at Harley-Davidson, I'm not the operating system development engineer, I'm not a lot of things. This is just a guy using some tools that exist out there in the wild and, and uh, trying to do his best job to explain maybe some best practices on uh, tuning torque-based ETC Harley-Davidson's. But anyhow, from my perspective, this is just a little list that I created uh, that are the different software levels that exist on different applications that I believe are utilizing torque-based electronic throttle control. So you'll see everything from 2017 Touring, um, you know, the engine package there being a Milwaukee 8, um, all the way right up through the latest CVO uh, with VVT. Um, which, to my knowledge, nobody on the face of the earth is yet uh, supporting. So, anyhow, you can see this list of uh, vehicles here and their associated software levels that you might find out in the wild. And then these are these are the software levels that uh, I think uh, one should use. So I've just labeled them preferred um, preferred software levels. So, anyhow, let me get my cursor back in order here for you okay so what I've done here is opened up a 942 calibration uh, you should be familiar with this environment here this is C3 which is part of the PowerCore software suite which seemingly very few Harley-Davidson tuners uh, use everyone still seems to use uh, WinPV with their original PowerVision uh, this software environment uh, PowerCore, C3, WinPEP 8, blah, blah, blah. It is fully functioning with uh, PowerVision, PowerVision 3, PowerVision 4. I've got a number of videos that kind of explain the different hardware platforms and file types and so on and so forth. So a lot of great features uh, that are available under the hood in PowerCore. So anyhow, here's a 942 calibration. And, you know, go straight into this throttle blade control area where a lot of the um, torque-based ETC variables are, are defined. Um, we'll just step through them here. So torque-based ETC switch. Uh, you turn this guy off and you're more or less in a throttle, what I call a throttle follower uh, type of mode. And that is, you know, right, right wrist asks and ECU gives. Whereas torque-based uh, throttle control, you have a driver demand at the right wrist. And then the ECU is going to say, Okay, I'm going to translate that to uh, a requested torque, and then based on all the things it knows about its its uh, its engine and its controls, it makes the necessary adjustments to deliver that amount of torque um, to the rear tire. So that's a very very simple explanation, but um, you know we won't get into to too many uh, in depth details um, in this video. So uh, this is going to be relatively quick. I don't want to make this long and you know, overly drawn out. But, uh, and then you get your torque-based ETC table. Um, you know, your X, Y axes here are twist grip and, and uh, RPM. And right now I've got my units in foot pounds. Okay, and if you're wondering what's going on with this screen, I've got it split. So I've got C3 over here and I've got WinPEP 8 over here. Again, if you've watched some other videos, you will have learned how to sync uh, your tuning tables over into your grid view. Uh, most people look at graph. I look at both graph and grid. 
Um, so when you, uh, you know, this tip has already been mentioned, but if you hold your control key, left click, uh, it's going to emulate any one of these tables over on your grid view. Today we're working on torque based ETC, so guess what? We're going to we're going to synchronize with the um, we're going to synchronize with the uh, torque based ETC table. So uh, anyhow, let me just step back over to this doc that I, I, I whipped up. Um, so obviously there's a ton of stuff that you need to address in your, in your calibration, uh, fuel, spark, you name it. There's just a lot of stuff, electronic throttle control uh, being one of them. So your tune, right, where does it come from? Well, you, you could have read it from the ECU, which may or may not be a production cal. Uh, might be something else that somebody else developed. Um, a tune that you have developed um, in the past uh, with a similar configuration or a tune from Dynojet tech support or a tune from a third party. But anyhow, you're going to find all sorts of changes made there like engine size, maybe injector size, cam um, selection to set the um, IVO, IVC front and rear or open and, oh, I guess it's intake intake valve close event and intake uh, valve open uh, event. Uh, basically when the ECU is going to take a, a snippet or a, a look at the um, uh, manifold vacuum to create a, a calculated uh, map to use for reference from there on in. Uh, rev and speed limit, base AFR, blah, 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 all this normal stuff. So um, here's the electronic throttle control stuff that we're going to maybe talk about today. So depending on your application, you may have a torque-based ETC or a throttle grip follower. Um, we already went over this table. And um, as far as I know, every one of these software levels um, has the, let me get this back up, has the torque-based ETC switch, which is hard to see, it's in blue right, right here, um, as one. Right, that means it's 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 on. Okay, so let me go back to this doc, and you have two choices. As far as I'm concerned, again, I'm not the end all, be all. Just trying to help some people out out there in the wild. Um, but you have two choices. One of your choices is you could disable TBETC, which is torque based electronic throttle control. So now you're essentially in a throttle follower mode. Um, not exclusively, there's still a bunch of magic going on behind the scenes in this particular uh, ECU um, control strategy. Um, but you could turn it off. You could then go and dial in your VE tables, getting those VE tables uh, representative of what's actually going on with that engine is critical, it's imperative. Uh, so you could do that with tuning link or, or manually. Uh, Tuning Link was just uh, released in a beta version of PowerCore, in case you're unaware of that. Probably have a separate video altogether on it here very soon, but just know that it's, um, yeah, it's, it's out there in the wild, and it's pretty awesome. Um, anyhow, <clears throat> then you could adjust your torque-based ETC tables to reflect the actual torque observed during dyno testing with maybe a little extra fudge factor margin applied at the end of the day. So, well, how in the world do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple, really. If you have a DynoJet Dyno and PowerCore, you're, uh, you're living pretty good. Um, so I'll explain that piece uh, in a minute. So once you get all that done, turn back on the switch, right off into the sunset, make any other uh, adjustments that, that you think are appropriate. So again, re-enable, which is this switch right here, turn it back on. Your other option is to leave torque-based ETC uh, enabled. Um, so to do this, or if you're doing this, you're gonna wanna have a good foundation as it regards to your modeled torque. Um, so, you know, again, where did you get the file from? Is it a stock cal? Is it something that you've done previously that you've had good luck with? Um, you know, if you don't have a good foundation and a good modeled torque uh, in your ECU cal, you may experience some difficulty in, in tuning and hitting all of the uh, all of the operating conditions of that bike. You may be torque limited by way of throttle, by way of spark, um, and it'll just make your your life a little more I don't know miserable uh, or the tuning process more tedious. 
Um, anyhow, so same same procedure here. So just leave it on, uh, which is different, I should say, from that other procedure. But your other option here, leave it on, dial in your VE tables, tuning linker manually, which either one is completely achievable with the tool set that you have available from Dynojet in PowerCore and the flash tuning devices that they offer. So the last the last I knew here, Dynojet recommends leaving the torque-based ETC table enabled during a dyno session. So this may make it difficult to tune if your model torque is not as accurate as possible. So I can't overstate that enough uh, or yeah, um, it's important. So in either case, along with having accurate or close to accurate as possible uh, torque tables, um, you can also take this, this uh, max throttle override table um, in either case, either the throttle follower or the uh, leaving torque based DTC on and just set these 100% columns out here at full tilt. Um, this one has one, two, three, four, five, 100% columns. Uh, but anyhow, you're going to want to set those up to be 100. Again, this is just what I have found to be, um, you know, a, a decent method in which to attack it. I'm sure other people have different methodologies, but again, with the tool set that's out there publicly available or to tuning centers, um, this may this may help out. So, okay, here's the real here's the real fun part, um, and it's all right here in front of you in uh, in in PowerCore. So again, got a cal open. It's a 942 cal torque based ETC on um, so what you're looking at is a number of dyno runs here so you've got one right here 25% third gear 40% throttle fourth 50 60 70 80 um, I've got all these just laid out here sorry I don't have a hundred percent at the moment but anyhow the grid view again left uh, click while holding the control key on torque based ETC. This calibration and the logs that came from it. Here we go. Okay, there's your 80%. There's your 70. There's your 60. There's your 50. So on and so forth. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if you're paying attention here, I can actually highlight all these. Just hold the shift key and boom, boom. So 85. Get back over here. 88. Table says 88. I'm going to give you 88 foot pounds of torque. This says, according to Dynojet, corrected torque 85. Probably not torque limited there. Again, could be a lot of limiters going on, but we're just focused on how to best focus, you know, or address the torque based ETC. Um, again, you can move through all of these. I can just click around here. I don't know. We'll move. As you can see, the cursor's tied to the cell that we're in, where the ECU is making its decision. Of course, that's not only, you know, ETC and stuff, it's spark advance, it's it's everything. So it's, uh, it's power core is a beautiful environment in which to, to tinker and tune and analyze data and make good decisions. So anyhow, here's, uh, you know, here's an area that says 98, 101, somewhere in there. Um, foot pounds of torque I know that's a little difficult to see but here's 109 110 it looks like but uh, long story short is you've got the ability to measure wheel torque uh, right here which is technically engine torque you could argue about how that is but uh, anyhow this is just a tool that's available uh, and the dyno is just that a tool so this wheel uh, your dyno jet torque I've got right here as my Z component to this grid. Again, the X and the Y um, are populated in, in, in synchronous with this torque-based ETC table. So I can populate anything I want in this table. Spark, torque, air fuel, you name it. I just chose torque right there. And again, if we bomb it around inside this you know, okay, 60, 2200, go over here, 60, 2200, 91 foot-pounds, 100. Now, if we had the flip-flop of this, right, you 
you notice that all of these are getting clipped. Um, this table's probably not high enough, right? If you've got a 107 that you've added a big bore kit to and whatever, and it's making 30% more torque uh, and power, or it's supposed to, you should probably step into this table and, uh, and uh, elevate it accordingly by the difference between the old and the new, uh, or suspected new. Uh, until you measure it, you don't know. And again, sometimes it's, um, it, it can be advantageous to turn off torque-based ETC, get all the limiters out of your way, see what kind of mustard that thing puts down, and then uh, get that table dialed in to what you think is appropriate, then switch it back on, then observe it through measurement, and give yourself a little extra fudge factor, you know, plus five, ten percent, whatever it may be, and uh, right off into the sunset. So, anyhow, I hope this video you you found it helpful. Uh, I know I'm all over the place between, um, you know, this C3 software to WinPep8, um, and then my little document here that uh, that I wrote up. But uh, anyhow, I hope you found it useful. If you have questions, you can comment. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. I, again, I'm not the end all be all, but uh, certainly um, willing to help you out. So until next time, Dino, Dino Dancing over and out.